Well, we go to my favorite place on earth, that would be Ireland, to speak with Charlie Sword. She has written a very, very crucial book, I think, at the time that we're in right now when it comes to, to work and people, etc. Her book is called Dare to Be a Revolutionary Leader. People are the solution. Change your leadership culture. Oh, boy. I can't tell you how many people on in the C-suite or even people that are younger coming up the ladder. I have heard them say they're overwhelmed, they're exhausted, and they have no idea how to implement what's happening at their companies. I'm sad to say. So Charlie can help us. Charlie, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Kate, uh, for inviting me to join you. And I'm delighted to be here. So let's talk about your career path first, because you have all this expertise that uh, you were able to pour into the book. Tell, tell the listeners about your background and what led you to your aha here about people. Okay, thank you, Kate. Well, uh, I started my career um, what, over, over 40 years ago. And, um, you know, uh, in Bank of Ireland Group, I went in uh, straight from uh, school, uh, as was the, the, the case then. And as I worked up through the ranks and the, 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 more, the higher I got in the management level and the more I got involved in strategic planning and decision making, the more I got a little bit disconcerted with the decision making process and some of the ethics. And what I found was that some of the policies and the procedures that related to people were, they were for the press and they were for print and they were for publication. But when it came to applying them to the people in the organization, I felt they, they fell way short. So the disillusionment set in. So uh, during that time, I also set up some social initiatives and I got a taste for the business life outside of the uh, banking environment. And so after some consideration, I decided that I would leave. I just felt I didn't fit in the organization and I didn't want the, the institution as I saw it um, to define me. And so I decided I would be true to my values and I left. Now, that was a, a huge decision because I had a mortgage, etc. But, you know, I had to be true to myself. And that's one of the key messages in my book. But when I left, I set up my own consultancy business, which is still functioning today, thank goodness. And I chose to work in the developing world. There was a lot happening there. The, the, the Iron Curtain had fallen and an awful lot of the former socialist countries were trying to align themselves with international best practices, et cetera. And I thought, you know, I'm going to lend a hand because um, it, it was just important to me and to give people a chance. So I've spent over 24 years now working in over 26 countries on multiple projects in a number of countries. And what I noticed um, because I work predominantly with the management, the leadership, the executive teams, and also with the boards of directors. And what I've noticed at all times is that when it comes to discussing their people, their, their people are almost the forgotten element of their business thinking. So what, what I found is that all leaders and all managers, they achieve their results through their people, but their people are not front and center in their decision-making process. And so I thought about it and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm learning hugely as, as I go through uh, life, go through my work. I love working with people and the feedback in, in the training rooms and in the workshops and in the boardrooms, it was phenomenal in that when I raised the people question, it caused people to stop and think. And I thought, gosh, I can't find it anywhere in a book anywhere to share with them. So perhaps I need to do this. Now, I have my own legacy when I left the bank. I knew what I wanted to do. And I realized I have a voice based on my experience and I want to use it. So I wrote the book as my fresh perspective on leadership. And I really would like to change other people's perspectives. Um, and I think the book is very timely because we're now in a post-pandemic situation. And I do think there's going to be a leadership crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. I do believe um, the, there's a lot to be learned from the original and the traditional leadership models, but I think we need to take the best out of those 
And I think we need to just, you know, get a bit more courageous and we need to step forward and we need to change things because the leadership models that got us to here, I don't believe are the ones to, to, to get us out of the situation. Yeah. So it's interesting. We talked off the air and diving into the book again, daring to be a, a revolutionary leader is what we're talking about. I mean, it's it's wonderful that that's the name, the title of the book, Dare to Be a Revolutionary Leader, which you can get on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever great books are sold. You parceled this down into three sections. You talk about yeah. the person, the person, the person, you know, you talk about the employees, you talk about the results. It's so interesting because that's the reverse order of how we've always heard it. It's about the results, get the results. And then, yeah, fine, great. Let Pat on the back and let's you know, maybe go away for a retreat. So you've reversed that, which I think is brilliant. Tell us about the book. The book is structured in three parts. And I've done my fair share of strategic planning when I was in the bank and since. And you're absolutely right. The bottom line is the starting point. And I believe, leave the figures alone. They will be achieved if you put your focus on the right thing. And for me, the right thing is the people. I'm really passionate about empowering people because those results will not be achieved without the employees in an organization. And therefore, they need to be front and center. And so the first part of the book then for leaders is yourself. So I'm guiding all leaders, whether you're in an existing leadership role or whether you plan to go into one, to really look at yourself. And the question I ask all my mentoring clients and I would ask in the book is, who do you want to be in the world? It's not what job do you want or what title do you want? They're completely irrelevant. It's who do you want to be in the world? How do you want to be remembered? And what legacy do you want to leave? And as a leader, they're the most important questions I think you need to answer. So the self part, of the book is about doing the inner work and taking the time to look at yourself. So I have guided exercises and thought processes and techniques there to help you go back and define who you really are, what are your core values, what are your intrinsic motivators, and do you embody all of these in how you deal with people? And so I take you through all of the characteristics, the skills, etc. And then when you master, and the whole point of this section of the book is that you master your self-leadership, because I truly believe, and I have seen it worldwide, that you can't effectively lead other people unless you can lead yourself. And that's why I'm starting with the self. Then I take the reader through to the section on your employees, so when you've mastered your self-leadership, you then start looking at, so how can I bring out the very best in my employees? How can I develop them, support them to master their self-leadership and to be the very best that they can be? And we work through all of the processes there, your communication skills, the art of delegation, how to give and receive feedback, not in a critical way, but in a developmental way, etc. And then... For me, when you have yourself developed, when you have your employees developed, your results will actually be more than achieved. And in this part of the book, the results part, I only focus on two specific areas. It's not to say the others are unimportant, they are. But these for me are the business critical areas of strategy and the customer experience. And we all know worldwide that the single biggest difficulty with strategy in organizations is the difficulty in implementing it. And what I've noticed in all the organizations that I've worked in, well, it's implemented by your people. So if your people are not front and center, if they've not been included in the decision-making process and in the planning, it's very difficult to just say to them, well, you know, this is the diktat, this is what we're going to do, this is what you have to do. I know no adult likes to be told what to do. And that's part of the reason of bringing in this book, that we don't tell people we stop dictating and that we start including them. The people on the front line, the people at all levels in an organization, they know what's happening and they know more than the leaders what the customer's perspective is. And I also do a lot of work in the medical sector and it's crippled right now. but. You know, when I work with medical healthcare sector employees 
and with business employees and business organizations. The one thing I say to them when we go through the process of leadership is, before you ever make a decision, please consider in the medical sector, there is a patient at the end of this thought process. So whatever you do, put that patient front and center because there's a consequence for all action and all inaction, whatever decision you make. And the same for business organizations. There is a customer at the end of every decision that's made. And in all sectors, there's a huge question of trust. So the strategy in all organizations is achieved by your people. And then when you look at that as well, and you look at the whole customer experience, they have to be that they are the second most important resource for any leader are your customers, medical sector, your patients, your clients, your service users. And therefore, I have just zoned in on those in the book as these are the two primary result areas you need to focus on. The financials will absolutely flow. The technology will always be there. But my concern is that, you know, humanity are being compromised with the level of technology development and the speed by which we're focusing on that and people can't keep up. So we just have to take our foot off that pedal and we have to focus on people. Um, And that's how the book is structured. So true. We are out of time. You said it all. This is a tremendous book. Dare to be a revolutionary leader. People are the solution. Change your leadership culture. Charlie Swords, thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. It was a pleasure. 